So I just wanted to do a quick video about this very cool Rotring Outro pen. This is a uh, historic Rotring from the, I believe the late 90s, maybe the mid 90s. And it's uh, pretty quirky, pretty interesting. So I uh, thought everyone here would find it to be interesting. The uh, Rotring Outro is uh, basically a plastic version of the Rotring 900 pen series. And I have it here. And obviously a strange color scheme, kind of like a Miami inspired color scheme. And then the uh, kind of the oddest of the nibs they sell on this or the versions they sell of it. And that is called the tubular nib. Some people call it a tubular fountain pen, but uh, for me, tubular nib is more accurate. Uh, Rotring would call this also the uh, Tintin Coolie or the Tiku pens, that's T-I-K-U, uh, which is basically, it looks like a rollerball but it's uh, more functionally like a fountain pen. So we'll get into the uh, how it writes in a minute and let's just run through the pen. So the outro was all plastic. It looks like a Rotring 900, which is the sort of the larger uh, of the Rotring fountain pens, rollerball, ballpoints, whatever, but the Rotring 900 is all metal where this is all plastic or uh, mostly plastic. The, this little piece right here is metal. But anyway, plastic cap, says Rotring, uh, nice clip. It's surprisingly strong. This little cool piece here, Rotring logo, not much else. Look at the pen, see the pink, blue, and then standard black here for the section. Uh, these are normally sold in all black. Uh, I've seen them sometimes in all white. Uh, I've seen them in pink and red. I randomly bought, bought this one in this weird pink and blue color scheme because it was super cheap on eBay but uh, it is pretty interesting. And as a historic relic, I think it's very cool. All this is plastic again, with these sort of uh, channels here. It's kind of uh, just a hard plastic. It has a little bit of grip from the channeling, but it's not grippy in and of itself. It does post like that, but it doesn't post and stop right here. It looks like it might, but it doesn't, it keeps going. This uh, pen, again, I, this is the tubular nib. It's also sold in a I believe a fountain pen, a roller ball, and a ballpoint, and a mechanical pencil. The 900 is also sold in the side knock, which is a ballpoint or mechanical pencil, but you would uh, kind of bend it to uh, move the tip forward. Don't have that one. Uh, the way the body works is you just unscrew it, and this plastic piece screws off. There's nothing in there, just a bunch of plastic Feels nicely made, but it's nothing fancy to it. These are not expensive pens. The outros were just day-to-day -day pens, you know. I don't know what the exact retail price was, but you could still buy them for in the $20 price range. As for the nib, it uses a standard refill, so a standard inter international cartridge. I guess technically you could put a converter in here. I haven't tried. And this is just a short international uh, Caran d'Ache. You could use whatever. You could use a Rotring cartridge if you have any. I don't screws down, have the Rotring, the red ring, that's uh, you know their name, Rotring, and then you have the section, and then the nib, or the tip. The way this works is, this is a tubular nib, which is uh, similar to a fountain pen in that there's a feed in here, and the ink kind of flows freely from the cartridge or converter down into the nib. And what happens is here is that there's a little kind of piece right here that sticks out the same way some of Rotring's drafting pens work. And that little piece acts as a plug. It'll go up and down. And I don't have any Rotring's drafting pens around, but that piece will act as a stopper. And I'm not sure if we can get it there. When I turn this upside down, you could see, if I can get it to zoom, you could see that piece comes out. And that's basically stopping the ink from flowing right now. And, uh, it's not perfect, it's a little bit messy, but it has never dripped on me. If you do buy one of these used, you wanna make sure that that little piece is in shape. And I'm having some zoom issues, some uh, focus issues. But basically, you see this little piece comes out, that stops the ink from flowing. And when you write, it pushes that piece up and the ink starts coming out. It's uh, more of what you would see in a drafting pencil, kind of like an isograph or uh, one of the other Rotring drafting pencils, or pens rather. But uh, that's basically how it works. So that goes there. If we go like this, you can see it, it basically disappears because there's no 
pressure pushing it down and no need to stop it. So go down, that little piece falls out. If I could get it to focus, little piece comes out and then it stops the ink from flowing. Do a quick writing test. This is a Rotring Outro, and this is the tubular nib. So you can write at a bit of an angle like this, but it's really not ideal. You can see it was kind of working, but not perfect. The drafting pens from Rotring, they tend to work best when they're fully upright or very close to upright. So don't confuse this with a roller ball because the nib is that kind of strange nib that, again, it works okay at an angle, but it's not perfect. You really want to have it as upright as possible. Again, and that's how a drafting pen works, right? You have it as upright as possible. That way you are always getting the exact measurement, like the line you're putting down reflects the thickness of the drafting pencil or pen perfectly, right? And uh, I don't even know that these came in sizes. This to me, it writes like a, like a medium, kind of like a 0.7 millimeter, but I don't really know what the sizing was because again, this I bought used with no box or anything like that. So it writes pretty nicely. You know, you have to be kind of conscious about what you're doing, but it could keep up with you. If you're getting a little sloppy and taking notes, it's fine. You just don't want to go too far at an angle. So it wouldn't be ideal for like uh, any sort of fancy curse or anything like that. But it does uh, lay down a pretty good line as long as you tend to keep that that uh, nib section fairly clean. The uh, only other thing I would note is that uh, some of these, a very limited number from what I can tell, came in clear. So you could actually see all the sort of mechanism in there. There's not a whole lot. There's a little piece that slides up and down, a feed, which is really just a, uh, a line of ink since it doesn't have a sort of... Uh, a true feed, kind of like a, an actual fountain pen, but uh, fundamentally they're kind of doing the same thing. And I haven't been able to find one of the clear ones yet. I'm sure they are out there, but usually you see them in the Rotring 900 and in incredible condition. So you're looking at over $200 for those where you could buy an outro if you shop around for maybe, uh, maybe 15, 20 bucks on you know eBay or wherever you like to buy those sort of thing. Size wise, uh, here it is relative to a Lamy Vista or Safari, whatever. Here's a Twisby Eco. And finally we have a Sharpie. So it's, it's actually a good size pen, uh, a little bit on the long side, which is nice uh, from a, you know, an older pen has a little bit of extra length to it. Uh, once you take the cap off, you're looking at a fairly standard pen. Actually, I really like the design. I like writing with this. It's one of my favorite uh, Rotring designs and uh, I'll do a video in the next couple days or weeks about the Rotring 900 which is the full metal version of this uh, much more expensive but uh, very very cool historic relic the uh, Rotring 400 is a lot smaller so uh, it's a different class of pen so that's it that's the Rotring Altro tubular nib I guess I forgot to point out that it's made in uh, West Germany, so you know it's uh, fairly old. The uh, you know instead of saying Germany, it says West Germany. Uh, but post acquisition from Sanford, which I think was in '97 or '96, whatever, Rotring would have started making basically everything in Japan. So if you see the Germany, you know where it's from, or if you go West Germany, you know it's it's early Rotring. So uh, nice little historic detail there. That about covers it. If you have any questions, let me know. And if you know anything about these Rotring tubular nibs, please leave a comment below. I know uh, it's kind of a cool historic relic and I wish we saw some more of them. I was glad to pick this one up and I was 
really cool that it worked with no cleaning. I think the mechanism is fairly simple. So if you do find one of these and it's not too clogged, you should be in pretty good shape. That's it. Thanks for watching.